In Indiana and across the nation, 70% of people who are blind or visually impaired are unemployed. That's why Bosma Enterprises has been creating opportunities for citizens who are blind and helping them navigate the path to independence, a path that began all the way back in 1915. At the turn of the 20th century, there were little to no employment opportunities for people who are blind or visually impaired in Indiana. Although many entrepreneurial people with vision loss found work tuning pianos or selling brooms, employers were reluctant to hire people who were blind. Because they didn't understand blindness, they would tend to shy away from those individuals. And on the other hand, the person who's blind would also shy away, so they would become isolated. In 1915, Bosma, then known as the Board of Industrial Aid for the Blind, arrived on the scene to fulfill the state's needs to rehabilitate its citizens who are blind, providing them with work skills in hopes of leading them towards a job in the community. At the time, it was the only organization of its kind in Indiana. By the late 30s, the public opinion of disability was beginning to change, and in 1938, the Wagner O'Day Act was passed, which urged government agencies to purchase products from suppliers that employ people who are blind. This major piece of legislation would help advance employment opportunities for people who were blind or visually impaired. From there, things started to progress rapidly in the landscape of opportunity. When there was a shortage of labor due to the Second World War, individual counselors who worked for state agencies were able to go out to potential employers and demonstrate that a blind person actually could do various kinds of jobs within the industrial setting. Throughout the middle of the 20th century, the country continued to make great strides toward equality for many people. And in 1945, Indiana introduced its first state-run rehab center to provide people who were blind with the skills they needed to work and live. Thanks to these programs, many people were able to regain valuable skills and confidence and find employment in the community. In 1984, Indiana renamed the Board of Industrial Aid for the Blind after Charles Bosma, who had served in the Indiana General Assembly and was an advocate for people with disabilities. But the programs were costly and didn't turn any profit for the government. Not long after, the state decided to remove the work center and industrial operations from its budget altogether. Without funding, the center was slated to close its doors for good. So it was like you know, it's dead unless somebody wishes to pursue it. Brian had a, obviously a keen interest in that because uh, its namesake was his father. So Brian actually took the initiative to try to reach out and gather prominent people in the city of Indianapolis to comprise the board of directors. These folks just had some grit and good old stick to itness, and they persevered and we are where we are today because of that. Saved from the brink of closure, Bosma Industries for the Blind looked toward its new future as a private, not-for-profit agency. But with no money or income, the organization faced a long, uphill battle. The primary piece of business they were dealing with was, can we meet next week's payroll? Are we going to be able to keep the doors open? Finally, after years of struggling to secure support and job opportunities, the company landed its first big break, a contract from the Department of Veterans Affairs. It meant more jobs for people with vision loss and more stability for Bosma. As the industrial side of the company flourished, the state turned to Bosma for help with its rehabilitation services. It was a huge success for the company. We were contacted by state government. They came to us and said, we're seeing real value in what you're doing. And what we would really like to do, move those services out from underneath the state of Indiana and privatize them with Bosma Industries for the Blind. And as the first decade of the 21st century came to a close, Bosma had achieved impressive progress. They had moved to a new location in Northwest Indianapolis and doubled in size. They had expanded from 40 to 240 employees, the majority of whom were blind or visually impaired. And since then, the company has continued to grow exponentially year after year. To better reflect its new comprehensive vision, Bosma Industries changed its name in 2006 and became known as Bosma Enterprises. In 2009, 
The Bosma Visionary Opportunities Foundation was established to raise support for Bosma's training and employment programs, allowing the organization to expand its rehabilitation efforts and serve more Hoosiers with vision loss. And if people give to the foundation, all that money goes to support programs. Today, Bosma is Indiana's leading expert and resource for issues surrounding blindness. Glove packaging, warehousing services, and hearing aids are just a few of the new lines of business we've developed to serve our mission and we continue to seek new ways of doing so. And we've had a great impact on the community of people who are blind or visually impaired, and we think we've had a significant impact on the sighted public about the, the abilities of people who are blind or visually impaired. Over the past 100 years, the faces have changed, but our mission has remained the same. To create paths to independence, to usher in opportunities, for employment and equality, to replace obstacles with open doors, and to let people know it's possible to move forward, even when you can't see the way. Bosma Enterprises, navigating blindness since 1915.